The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. With the coming of the summer of 1899, the year following the great rush to hunt gold in the Yukon Territory, Whitehorse, the first large settlement above Skagway, was teeming with activity. Prices were high, and yet men were lax in the use of their money, since each was convinced he would strike it rich within a short time. The thought of finding gold spurred most of them to hard work, but there were some, like Curly Dalton, who intended to get their gold an easy way by taking it after others had found it. Curly had gathered three men together who thought as he did. They sat at a table in the cafe one day. Frankly, I don't intend to break my back digging or panning for the stuff. Yeah, now I see what you're driving at, Curly. What's more, I think me and these other two feel the same way about getting gold. Hi, fellas. We sure do. Well, in that case, suppose we go over to the hotel where we can talk private. I'll tell you all just how we'll operate. <clears throat> all right, come on, let's go. From the start, Curly and his gang used rough and ruthless methods to get what they were after. Their first job had been to rob the express office just before the boat was ready to take on shipments to go to the States. Well, good evening. I reckon you have some gold to ship on the boat? I just have time to fix up waybills and get it to the boat with other shipments. Oh, shut up. This is a hold-up, mister. Wait, you can't... Sit down! All right, men. Get over there and clear out the safe. <laughs> He's got it open for us already. Sure. Yeah. There's plenty of pokes of dust here, too, Curly. Well, hurry up and grab him. Somebody might come in. Well, I won't let you get away with those pokes. Lots of the prospectors are sending money home. You can't do it. Help! Help! You asked for this? Oh! Now, let's get out of here, Prado. Come on, right, Curly. Come on. After that robbery, Curly and the others had quickly made their way to the cafe and were among the crowd that a short time later milled around the entrance and interior of the express office. Those crooked killers even grabbed all the waybills to make it tough to know who lost their money. Yeah. I lost my receipt, but I had a poke for $300 I was sending home. Yeah, I mislaid my receipt, too. Now we can't put in any claims for the express company. Yeah, the constable says they didn't leave any trail at all. The only witness against them is the agent, and he's dead. Uh, got it, them killers ought to hang, that's why. Yeah, we got show him. Show him. A week later, Curly and Red sat in the cafe unobserved and listened to an old sourdough talking to the crowd a short distance away. Well, if any of you think I'm not a good sport, <laughs> I'll prove it by paying for whatever anyone wants, understand? <laughs> yep. The whole bill's on me. <laughs> that old sourdough's loaded with gold, Curly. He sure is. Listen, listen, all of you. Just what, I just want you to know that I was one of the first to strike it rich. Yes, sir. I come up here with the first bunch. <laughs> I struck it rich right off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, well, I gotta go home. Going home now. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yeah. All right, let's get out of here and find the others. Come on. Right. Curly and Red quietly left the cafe ahead of the old boasting sourdough. They found the others. Then they all rode after the sourdough when they saw him leave the cafe and mount at the hitch rack. The old man didn't realize what was about to happen as he rode along the trail. Get along there, Betsy. Get up there. <laughs> oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me where I come from Alabama. Hey, up there. Huh? Hey, what's that? Uh, hi, fellas. 
Oh, oh, there. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, oh. All right, give us that poke of gold you got with you. Huh. You got bandanas to hide your faces. Well, no yellow-backed outlaws are going you to get it. You talk a... too much. Oh. All right, Ray. Get the poke of gold. We'll get back to the cafe before we're missed. Right. Right? Steady, boy. Easy. Uh. Steady. Up. I got it. There. All right, let's go. All right, come on. Once more, they were among the first to ride to the scene when someone came into the cafe and reported finding the unconscious sourdough on the trail. Oh, 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 hold on. Now, here's where it happened, men. I put the old sourdough on his horse and left him at the constable's office. Just before I went to the cafe. I guess the constable hasn't got here yet. That yeah, won't do him any good either. I reckon we've covered up any trail them crooks left by now. He sure has. Yeah, that's right. We didn't stop to think. We should have waited until the constable had a chance to look the ground over. Oh, well, let's get back to the cafe. Get him, man. Oh, get him. Get him. And so it was that time after time, Curly was smart enough to see that any trail would be covered up before the constable had a chance to follow it. In Dawson, Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police entered the office of the inspector at headquarters. Morning, Inspector. Understand you want to see me. Oh, yes, Sergeant Preston. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. Thank you, sir. Sergeant, a gang is operating in the vicinity of Whitehorse. They've been robbing and killing, yet they managed to cover their trail effectively. They must have a clever leader, Inspector. Yes, that's true. Of course, Whitehorse is teeming with newcomers who follow the trail through White Pass from Skagway. The last time I was down there, sir, the town was greatly overcrowded. Jim has his hands full keeping those prospectors in line. I know. He's a fine officer, but he needs some help. Yes, I can understand that, sir. Uh, we could use twice as many mounted police as we have. But since that's impossible, I want you to go down there and see what you can do. Yes, of course. How soon can you leave here? Right away, sir. Come on, King. Let's get going. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, Sergeant, and good luck. One afternoon, Sergeant Preston arrived with his dog, Yukon King, at the constable's office in Whitehorse. Oh, buggy. Oh, boy. Come on, King. Howdy, Sergeant. Oh, oh. Hello, Frank. How are you? Well, Sergeant, I've been expecting you. The inspector said you were having trouble down here, Jim. We made the trip as quickly as we could. I'm sure glad to see you. Frankly, we've had plenty of trouble. Oh? A gang of outlaws seems to be operating in this vicinity. But no matter how hard I've tried, I haven't been able to pick up their trail. White horse is crowded right now. They could be hiding right in town for that matter. Be hard to get a line on them. I know. Haven't they left any trail at all on any of the robberies they've pulled? They could have. But it seems before I can get to the scene of the crime, or at least by the time I do get there, a mob of prospectors is milling all over the place. Oh, I see what you mean. When the express office was robbed, the agent was murdered. Then when an old sourdough was held up, he was hit on the head with a gun butt. All he could tell me was that there were three or four horsemen who had their faces partly covered with bandanas. To connect the two crimes? There have been more, Sergeant. A couple of prospectors a few miles out Indian Creek were attacked in their sleep, knocked unconscious, and robbed of their gold. They didn't have a chance to see anyone. But somehow I feel that the same ones are responsible for all the crimes that have taken place in the last few weeks. The pattern of the crimes does seem to be the same. Idea must be not to leave witnesses or a trail. That's the way it seems to me, too, Sergeant. Well, Jim, I'll stay here in Whitehorse until we find that gang and get them behind bars. Come on, King. We'll go get some food and rest now. Oh, that night in Curly Dalton's room at the hotel... Curly and his three followers were talking. Now, don't forget, when you leave here, ease out one at a time so you won't be noticed. You don't have don't to worry, careful. boss. It sure is a laugh, Curly. The way everybody in town's excited about the jobs we pulled, with us living right in White Horse listening to them. Yeah, they're a bunch of dope, Curly. Sure knows how to fool them. Well, just how long we keep them fooled depends on you fellas. Just one slip of the tongue at the cafe and they'd be on our necks. Don't worry, Curly. We're all careful. We do a lot of listening, but very little gab. That's right. We don't talk. And what's more, Curly, with you living here at the hotel, each of us living in separate room and houses, we aren't together very much. Well, we can't be too careful. Yeah, we've got that. away with plenty right. so far. Yeah. By the way, it's about time we found some other job, Curly. 
Might as well get as much dough as you can while the getting's good. Uh, get... That's all right with me. Now, tonight after you leave here, see if you hear of anything that'll tip us off to another easy job. You better get going right now. I'll see you all later. After leaving the others, Red went to the cafe. A prospector came in and stood beside Red. He immediately followed the custom of many of the old sourdoughs in the Yukon by turning to Red and speaking as if they were friends. Been up here long, mister? Long enough. How about you? <laughs> Reckon I was amongst the first to rush up here. Yep. Come all the way from Frisco, too. Well, that's a long way to come. I suppose you were down that way prospecting for gold, huh? Sure was. In fact, I've hunted gold in Colorado and Utah and Nevada and most everywhere. Yes, sir. It sure is funny how an hombre will grow old chasing that yellow stuff. Well, it gets into your blood, sort of. Once it does, it's there to stay, seems like. Yeah, that's right. Did you ever find much gold? Seems to be an experienced prospector like you ought to have quite a lot stuck away in the bank. Bank? Ha! Huh. Bank, did you say? No, sir. You don't catch me letting them banks get a hold of my cash. Yeah. What you got against banks? Well, sure, I'll tell you. I made a strike in California a few years ago. Put all my diggings in a bank in Frisco. So that's where you have your gold now, huh? Not on your life, mister. Can you believe this? One day I goes into town and there's a big line outside that bank. Well, I got to asking around and I found out that the bank was going under. Yeah. By the time I got to the door, they closed them plumb in my face. And me with nigh on the 20,000 in gold stashed away in there. Gosh, what happened? What do you think happened? I never got a cent of it, not one cent. The bank failed, and there I was, broke again. Yeah, that was mighty tough life. Yeah, sure was. <laughs> well, that'll never happen to me again. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Well, if you're broke, it doesn't make any difference anyway. Broke? Who said I was broke? Why, I've dug out plenty of gold from my claim up on Nugget Creek since I've been here. Well, it's fine that you're fine. But if you won't put it in the bank, where do you... Mister, I got a good place in my cabin to hide my takings. It's better than any bank. Nobody knows but me where it is, and when I want it, I know it'll be there. You just take my advice and stay away from banks, mister. Yeah, sure, I remember that. Well, I'd leave now. I have to meet a friend of mine. See you again sometime. So long. Red left the cafe hurriedly and went to Curly's hotel room. A short time later, he was telling Curly... I know of a good chance to get some more dough, Curly. Get it easy. Yeah. Well, tell us about it, Red. I heard a sourdough talking over in the cafe a while ago. About all the gold he got from his claim up on Nugget Creek. What about it? He likely has it sucked away in the bank. That's the point, Curly. He was saying how he lost money in a bank failure once and didn't believe in banking his cash anymore. Uh... I wonder where he keeps it then. He was saying he had a good hiding place at his cabin. And I found out he lives out there alone. See, that does sound like a good setup for us, Red. All right. Get the others and meet me on the edge of town near Nugget Creek Trail. We'll go out and get that old fool's cash and be back in town long before anyone knows what happened. Later that night, the four crooks pulled to a stop in front of the cabin on Nugget Creek. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Yeah, there's a light inside. It must still be up. Yeah. Now, use your bandanas across your faces before we go in. All right. All right. Well, all right, let's go. Yeah, what was it that you... And bandanas masking your faces. You must be robbers. Get back in there. Now, no, wait a minute. You can't... Shut up. I come inside, fellas. Now, look. There's no need to come here with guns and all. I'm just a poor prospector trying to get a little dust He's together. I... Yeah. Now, look, mister, we know you got a pile of gold hid away in here, and we're going to get it. Now, tell us where it is, or I'll put a bullet in you right now. No, don't. I... I'll tell. Then be quick about it. It's hid under a loose floorboard. Over there in the corner of the cabin. Go look, fellas. Sure, right. Yeah. There's a loose board here, all right. Well, get it up and see if the gold's there. Sure. Hey, 
Here's an old carpet bag hidden in the opening. Must be the gold. Good. Bring it here. All right. Open it up. All right. This is it. Several pokes of gold. Don't take that. It's all my saving. Shut up, you! Uh, let blow on the back of the head. will keep him quiet for a while. Now let's get out of here and go back to town. When Curly and his men reached the edge of town, they separated, and each one went to his own living quarters. Early the following morning, the prospector, with a crude bandage on his head, entered the constable's office to report the robbery. Constable, I've come here to tell you I was robbed during the night. There was four of them. Sit down, Ned, and tell us about it. Oh. This is Sergeant Preston. Oh, howdy, Sergeant. Morning, Ned. Looks as though you had trouble with those crooks. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm clipping you on the back of the head. Lucky it was a glancing blow. Better sit down, Ned. Thanks. You say there were four of them? Yeah, they said they'd kill me if I didn't tell them where my gold was hid. So I told them. After they got it, the one who was given the order socked me. They got away with all the gold I had. It was hid away under a floorboard in an old carpet bag. We'll go out there and see what we can find at your cabin. I'll go with you, Sergeant. We'll rebandage Ned's head and let him wait here until we get back. Oh, this bandage is all right, Sergeant. It isn't much of a wound. Oh, well, all right. We won't be gone long. Ready, Jim? Right with you, Sergeant. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. This is the chance we've hoped for, Jim. No one knows about Ned's robbery, so we'll be able to pick up their trail. That's right. Ready, Buggy. Easy there, boy. Go, uh, Buggy. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Sergeant Preston and the constable set out for the cabin on Nugget Creek. As they rode along the trail, with King running alongside, the constable was saying... Ned's cabin is just around the bend ahead, Sergeant. Good. Ought well, to be easy to pick up the trail of four men. That's right. I think this is the time we'll get a line on those crooks. I hope so, Jim. After we... Look ahead there. There are eight or ten horses standing outside that cabin. Uh-oh. A curious crowd from town again. That's bad. Let's hurry. Get up, Lucky. Get up, there. Come on, now. <laughs> In a few moments, the two Mounties pulled to a stop in front of the cabin. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, King. There were several men standing in the doorway, looking inside curiously, while a few others were roaming aimlessly around inside. Uh, here's the constable with Sergeant Preston. Now step aside and let him in. Hi, Sergeant. We heard Ned was robbed, so we all rode out. We can't figure out what happened to Ned, though. He isn't around. Who told you about the robbery? Huh? Well, I don't rightly know. It was sort of rumored around. I see. Let's go inside, Jim. Come on, King. Good morning, Constable. Looks like you must have heard the news after we did it at the cafe. Yes, it does look that way. Who told you? Oh, well, I just heard the men talking about it. We all decided to come out and look things over. Too bad you did. You men have ruined our chances of picking up a trail. Gosh, now that's too bad. We never thought of that, did we, fellas? No, I had no idea. Sure feels sorry for Ned losing all that gold. That's what he gets for keeping it under a loose floorboard instead of putting it in the bank. That's right. Now, all of you go on outside so we'll have a chance to look around in here. Sure, let's go, fellas. All right, let's go. Hmm. Doggone it, Sergeant. Those prospectors have ruined our chances again. I know. Well, they've all left. He might as well leave, too. What I'd like to know is who got them to come out here in the first place. Of course, Ned might have told someone before he reached your office. I suppose he did. Let's go back and talk to Ned. Come on, King. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and the constable entered the office where Ned was waiting. Hey, uh, Kelly, it sure didn't take you long. Did you find any clues? No, Ned, we didn't. As a matter of fact, there were eight or ten men from town what? out there when we arrived. Well, what were they doing out there? Just curious, Ned. They went out as soon as they heard about the robbery. What I can't figure is how they found out about it. Ned, did you tell anyone about it before you came here? No, sir. I come straight here to the constable's office without meeting anyone. Oh, that's interesting. Tell me something else. How many people knew you kept your gold hidden under a loose floorboard? Nobody. I kept it a secret till I was forced to tell them bandits. No one needed to know where it was actually hidden, Sergeant, as long as they knew he had gold hidden at his cabin. It was easy, for instance, for the thieves to Hold force... on, Jim. I had another reason for asking that. Remember that rusty-haired fellow who was inside the cabin, the one who spoke to us? Uh, yes. He made a remark about Ned. 
saying that's what he got for keeping his gold under a loose floorboard instead of keeping it in the bank. That's right, he did say that. The only ones who'd know that would be the four men who robbed Ned and Ned himself. And that fellow must I believe be... he's one of that gang, Jim. Hmm. I'd better go pick him up for questioning. No, don't do that. If you do, the others will make a getaway. Then what do you intend to do? I have a plan that may work, Jim. Now, you and Ned listen carefully because Ned's going to play a part in this. What do you want me to do, Sergeant? Ned, you've heard of fool's gold, of course. You know what it is. Oh, yeah, sure. It's iron pyrites, a metallic, yellowy-looking stuff that's worthless. And a newcomer's been fooled by it, thinking he struck gold. I've been fooled by it myself. Mm Mm-hmm, but you can't fool a sourdough like me, no, sir. It feels different and has a sulfur-like taste. Lots of folks is fooled by it, though. I know. That's what I'm counting on. Now, here's what you're to do and say, Ned. If you act your part well, it may work. Now, listen closely. Sergeant Preston told his plan to the constable and Ned. Later that day, Ned entered the cafe and looked around. He saw the man Preston had described standing with a group of prospectors at the back of the cafe. As Ned approached the group, they started asking questions. Here's Ned now. How are you feeling? Too bad about your goal, Ned. Lose it all. Looks like you must have got hit in the head. I got hit all right, but outside of that, I don't feel very bad. (laughs) I should think losing all that gold would make you feel mighty bad. I sure feel bad. (laughs) Well, it might have if I uh, really lost all my gold. What do you mean? What I mean is that them outlaws got fooled, that's what. What? (laughs) Fool? How do you make that up? (laughs) Well, you see, they wouldn't figure I'd be wise enough to maybe hide my gold in a good place and... Then fill some pokes with fake gold, you know, fool's gold, and hide that under a loose floorboard. Great day. <laughs> and you mean that what they took was only fool's gold instead of your real gold? Is that it? They'll find that out when they try to spend it. Well, Ned, you sure are smarter than I thought. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was smart, all right. Well, reckon I'll be getting along. See you all later. Yeah, right. so long. From the window of a store across the street, Sergeant Preston and the constable saw Red leave the cafe hurriedly and walk quickly up the street. There he goes, Jim. Do you think he fell for Ned's story, Sergeant? Looks like it. Anyway, it won't take us long to find out. We'll follow him and see where he goes. Come on, King. They don't want him to know we're following him. Just saunter along in case he looks back. There's no reason why he should suspect anything. Look, he's going into the hotel. Let's hope the others are in there. Come on. (laughs) Meantime, Red entered the hotel and went to Curly's room, where Curly and the two others were playing cards. Hi, Red. I thought you were staying at the cafe a while. Let me in, Curly. Yeah, sure, come on. I heard something at the cafe, Curly. What'd you hear? Yeah, what's up? You look worried, Red. What's worrying me is I think that prospector tricked us last night. Huh? What do you mean? He's over at the cafe right now, crowing over the fact that we didn't get his gold. Well, he's crazy. You saw what's in that bag under the bed? He claims he kept that carpet bag filled with fool's gold, just in case he did get robbed. Fool's huh? gold? Hey, you mean what we got was worthless? Well, we ought to go back there and plug him. Ah, uh, get the bag and put it on the table, Red. All right. Here it is. All right, open it. Let's have a look. It takes an expert to tell fool's gold from the real thing. I can tell. Don't worry. Open one of those pokes. Sure. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, it looks like the real stuff to me. Yeah, but lots of people get stuck with fool's gold. Yeah, maybe so. But we're not stuck. This is real gold. <laughs> <laughs> By thunder, he must have got mixed up and tricked himself then. The other he has hidden away must be the fake stuff. I wonder... An experienced sourdough like him would know the difference with his eyes shut. I'd like to know just why he passed out that story. What do you mean, Curly? You think he had some reason to say what he did? Yeah, that's right. All right. Each of you go pack your stuff and get your horse. What's the idea? Where are we going? I'm packing my stuff right now. Then we'll meet on the south trail and head for Skagway. Now go on. Get out of here and make it fast. You two ready? All right. But you're too suspicious, Curly. When you shot that express agent a few weeks ago, you acted like we were dopes enough to run around town boasting about it. You're not the only smart one in this gang, Curly. Get going and keep your mouth shut. Now, go on. Oh, all right. Get back inside. Uh, hey, where are you, Mounties? We got to get out of here. This will stop you, fella. Oh! 
As Sergeant Preston and the constable battled with three outlaws just inside the door, Curly, standing back in the room, quickly drew his gun. Watch out, Red! I'll get one of them! The great dog, Yukon King, saw the gun in Curly's hand, and knowing that a gun meant death, he sprang forward. Get away, get away, you fuck! I'll settle this one! Maybe you got him, but you won't get me! Look out, Sergeant, his gun! Give me that gun! Oh, my hand, you're twisting! Drop that gun, drop it! Keep these three covered, Jim. Right, Sergeant. Dirty mud, I'll kill you. Sergeant Preston looked up as Curly, battling against King, managed to drag his arm free as he landed a vicious kick on King's side. For the moment, Curly was free as King fell back. And then as the great dog started for him again, Curly, having quickly grabbed his gun, aimed it at King, shouting... Oh, I'll put a slug in you. No, you don't. Down, King. Down, fella. Watch him, boy. I've got his gun. I've got the other guns. Now get over there, all of you. All right. Now look, Sergeant, there's Ned's carpet bag with the pokes of gold in it. <laughs> His rusty head out of fell for old Ned's story just like you figured he might. Hey, Red, you crazy fool. You fell for a trick just like a thought. Don't call me a fool, Curly. It was your idea to stay here in town. Yes, and you might have continued to get away with your robberies and killings if Red there hadn't talked too much at the cabin today. Yeah, well, that dumb poor cat... I should have known better to hook up with him. You're not so smart, Curly. Uh, You'll be the one to hang for killing that express agent. Shut up, shut up, you hear? Take it easy, Curly, take it easy. We already heard about that when we were listening outside the door. Once more, your friend Red over there talks too much. This is the gang who've been pulling all those jobs, all right. Yes, Jim, there's no doubt about it. The pattern of covering their trail by having a crowd gather at the scene of the crime is the same in all of the jobs. That's right. That's why I was sure they were staying in town and returning to town after each job. We're arresting all four of you in the name of the Crown for robbery and murder. No, you can't hold the rest of us for murder. It was Curly did the shooting. Yeah. All of you are equally guilty. Now, Jim, I'll take these men to jail. This case is closed. <laughs> We now take you to Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Oh, yes, Sergeant Preston, I did. Skipper Camden and his first mate are wagering everything they own that they'll win the riverboat race tomorrow. I suggest that you keep close watch and make certain that they're not planning harm to Captain Davis or his boat. I'll keep my eyes open, Inspector. I'll take King with me and see what I can find out. Come along, King. <laughs> Yes, the big riverboat race is the talk of Dawson, and the stakes are high. But Sergeant Preston may find that his assignment is much more dangerous than he thinks when he sets out to make sure it's going to be a fair race. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure, Race of the Riverboats, Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts.